So one of the defining characteristics of this tumor that actually has made gastrointestinal stromal tumor a poster child of targeted therapy, at least in the solid tumor arena, is the identification of activating mutations that seem to be driving oncogenesis. So Andy, could you walk us through what mutations have been identified, which are the common ones, and the specific nuances of the individual mutational subsets? Sure. Um, so there are really four major mutations or most commonly found mutations in gastrointestinal stromal tumor. Uh, and then there are a few that are, um, are extremely rare, but also can be present. Um, the, by far the most common mutations are seen in KID, which is a receptor tyrosine kinase. Uh, and of the mutations in KID, the most commonly mutated area is in exon 11, uh, which is the juxtamembrane domain. And this leads to constitutive activation of the receptor. Um, this mutation uh, is commonly seen in gist of all locations um, uh, in, from the stomach, which, as you just mentioned, Shresh, is the most common location for tumors to arise, but also from the small bowel and other locations. The next most common mutation is seen in exon 9 of KIT, uh, which is part of the dimerization motif. Uh, this mutation is more commonly seen in tumors arising from the small bowel than from other locations. Although even in the small bowel, exon 11 mutations still predominate. Another common mutation uh, seen in patients with primary tumors is, are mutations in a related uh, tyrosine kinase called platelet-derived growth factor receptor alpha, or PGFR alpha. Uh, these mutations almost universally occur in tumors arising from the stomach. Um, and of these mutations, two thirds of them uh, are in a particular amino acid uh, in aspartate uh, 842 uh, and a change to a valine residue instead. Um, that accounts for about two thirds of these mutations. There are other mutations as well, and we'll come back to the significance of this a little bit later. And what's interesting is that these uh, mutations are found more commonly in um, registries of patients with tumors uh, than in patients who develop metastases, suggesting that this tumor is, this mutation is seen in tumors uh, more commonly diagnosis, but may be at a lower risk of developing metastatic disease. The fourth uh, most common site of mutation is in one of the four genes uh, encoding different subunits of succinate dehydrogenase, which is a Krebs cycle enzyme. So SDH A, B, C, and D. Um, so mutations here, uh, cause uh, inactivation of uh, the succinate dehydrogenase complex, uh, and probably through a variety of mechanisms, including upregulation of vascular endothelial growth factor production, uh, as well as alterations in DNA methylation and changes in gene expression, uh, it leads to development of the tumor. And the importance behind uh, this, uh, this class of mutations is, is several fold. One is they tend to be more indolent, uh, than other uh, kit mutant uh, gastrointestinal stromal tumors. Uh, two is they almost universally occur in the stomach as well. Um, and three uh, is that uh, these are typically refractory to imatinib, which we'll discuss again uh, in a few minutes. Um, and then perhaps the fourth point, which is also critically important, is that these are commonly inherited mutations. Uh, they may occur in the germline uh, and although not everyone who carries this mutation will be affected with this disease, uh, it is something that can be a form of familial gastrointestinal stromal tumor or other disorders such as uh, paraganglioma and pheochromocytoma. So I, I think that's, that's a very good start. Uh, just a couple of points, one question, one comment. Uh, I think it's important for us to reiterate here that these are driver mutations and they are non-overlapping in the sense that theoretically there shouldn't be or cannot be a patient with a gastrointestinal stromal tumor that has both KIT and PDGF RA as the driver mutations. Uh, now having said that, I think our clinical experience suggests that there is always a rare exception to the general rule, but I think in that given patient that's clearly a zebra, not a horse, uh, uh, one would think that there are 
multiple primaries, but not necessarily the same gist with the two different mutations. 